It is 152 years old, 287 feet tall, and made of 8.9 million pounds of cast iron. It's the most recognizable symbol of American democracy and a worldwide icon. And, like any man-made structure, it has endured its share of nicks and dings and suffers from more than 1,300 cracks and defects from exposure to lightning, rain, and the occasional earthquake. It's the United States Capitol Dome, and it's getting a facelift. The first Capitol Dome, made of copper and wood and designed by Charles Bullfinch, was finished in 1824. But it wasn't long before the nation and its representatives outgrew this early design. As the nation grew and the, we got more members of Congress and the Capitol got very crowded, so they decided to add those two new wings, the new House Wing and the new Senate Wing, which opened up in the late 1850s. And when they began to complete those wings, they realized that that old small copper dome looked out of place. It didn't fit the much larger building. So in December 1854, Philadelphia architect Thomas Walter, who was already designing the Capitol's extensions of its House and Senate wings, unveiled plans for the massive new dome. It would fit the grander scale of the building, and perhaps really importantly, it would be built of cast iron that would be painted white, and that would make it fireproof because many of the Capitol's historic spaces had been burned in various fires throughout the early 19th century. It took eight more years before the Statue of Freedom was placed atop the dome on December 2nd, 1863, during the darkest days of the Civil War. It was the capstone to an ambitious project. Senator Solomon Foote said at one point, we can defend the Union and build our capital at the same time. It wasn't until January 1866, after the war ended, the scaffolding was removed from the dome's interior. That allowed a full view of Constantino Bramidi's magnificent fresco, The Apotheosis of Washington. All told, it cost $1,047,291. In the years since, the Union has endured, but the dome has taken a beating. Unique among many monuments, the Capitol Dome is also a workplace. More than 25,000 people work for the United States Congress in some capacity. In college, uh, my college roommates and I stopped in Washington, and I actually have a picture here in my office of me in front of the Capitol. It strikes me today when I see that picture um, that in my wildest imagination, I would not have dreamed that in just a few short years I would serve in that building. Congress renovated the dome in 1959 and 1960, but the upkeep of such an icon never stops. Just like any roof, the dome needed repairs, something obvious in the new millennium. One of the real priorities was to make sure that we restored and renovated the dome uh, because there were something like 1,300 different cracks and defects. And the dome is, of course, a symbol not only of our country, but it really of freedom throughout the world. In 2014, the architect of the Capitol began a two-year, $60 million renovation to repair the cracks, remove lead paint, and restore the dome to its original splendor. It was a tight schedule. The timeline here is important to understand, too, because you've got to do that renovation between inaugurals. You don't want to have all this scaffolding and so forth covering the dome when you're trying to do a presidential inauguration. So we wanted to get it uh, funded so that it could get done in time for the inauguration in 2017. The scaffolding for the current renovation started going up in the spring of 2014 as well as a 5,500-pound 5, donut inside the dome to catch any falling debris. Since then, the dome has been surrounded by wood planks, metal scaffolding, and, at times, plastic sheeting. Scaffolding is now coming down and workers are starting the final phase of repairs. For many people, this may be the only time they see the dome in person. 
but the scaffolding will place any photos very firmly in the current time period. And these repairs will make sure future generations will be able to see it as well. By design and by very, very strict design, we don't have an organized religion. We don't want one. We've seen what it did to Europe. We want no part of that. But we, we sense there's something missing in that spiritual sense. So we create this, you know, this temple. I like to think of it as a metaphor for trying to make the whole country better, the government itself, you know? Always a work in progress. I mean, it's, it is literally the, the building that represents the United States of America. Everyone around the world knows what it means, what it stands for. It's good to, good to see that you know, our monuments and uh, you know, national buildings are being um, restored and taken care of. So, you know, I really appreciate that. It's sort of the center of DC. I mean, I know, you know, I think that's where sort of all of everything kind of happens. Every nation has symbols that represent them in some way. When people look at them, it speaks the United States to them. But I would argue the most important symbol and the most recognizable symbol that really speaks for the United States is the Capitol Dome.